I'm Darlene Merkler with Inland Caregiver Resource Center. I'm here on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday at noon for 15 minutes, and I've been giving tips for family caregivers, but most of you who've been tuning in realize that the tips that I've been giving are really good for anybody. Today's topic, and also on Thursday, is going to be in two parts, and the topic is critical documents. And today I'm going to be talking about just health care documents. However, I have a whole list of different documents that um, are critical to have in place, and I'll be going over the rest of them on Thursday. The healthcare documents takes a little bit longer, so I just want to talk about that today. First of all, this is not just for family caregivers. It's not just for people over 60. The information I'm giving you today is for anybody 18 years old or older because we don't want to leave decisions like this up to our family members. I know that I wouldn't want my children to have to make critical decisions about the end of my life um, if I hadn't made it clear to them what my wishes are, which I have. So anybody 18 or older, don't leave these decisions up to your loved ones. Put something in place, and I'm going to give you several different ways you can do that today. Uh, put something in place before... Um, ho hopefully nothing does have ever happen that you can't make decisions for yourself but we never know about that look at the situation we're in now and look how many people are on ventilators and not able to make decisions for themselves so this is very timely information I don't know how many of you remember the Terry Schiavo case it was years ago and it was in the, all over the news it was a 34 year old woman who unfortunately went into a coma and she, she was hooked up to ventilators and breathing machines and IVs and um, lots of different equipment that was keeping her alive and um, her husband did not want to keep her hooked up to the equipment but her parents did and I know it's it's very hard for a parent even of a an adult child to uh, make that kind of a decision well, they unfortunately, this whole thing went to the Supreme Court, and um, the husband did wind up being able to unhook her, and she passed away. However, who who would have thought that a 34 year old would need an advanced health care directive or something in writing to help her family make that decision? It would have been so much easier if she did. So we all think that it can't happen to us, but like I said, look at the, the situation we're in now. The uh, I am going to talk about health care forms today, but these are all the different critical documents that I want to talk about, and most of them I'll be talking about on Thursday. <clears throat> the health care um, part it takes a little bit longer and I think is a little bit more important because uh, we want to make these decisions properly. So the first thing that we should have in place is a health and emergency contact primary physician form. You can Google this form, just say emergency contact form, and there are lots of different free ones online. And it basically is just your name, your address, your phone number, your insurance number, who your doctor is, your doctor's phone number. Because think about it, if something happened that you suddenly couldn't speak or talk for yourself, would your family know who your primary care physician is and how to contact that person? Also, copies of your insurance cards would be good. And when we're putting all these forms in place, it's really good to give them to someone who you are going to appoint as your agent to speak for you if you're not able to speak for yourself. Next, I'm going to talk about three um, health care forms, and they basically are very similar. Uh, they just work in different ways, and these are the most important forms that I want to talk about. 
The first one is an advanced health care directive. This form also can be downloaded off the internet. I will say that it's good to take advantage of a free consultation with an elder law attorney, um, even if you are downloading the forms online, just to make sure that you have all your bases covered. Ideally, we would go to an elder law attorney and have a trust or, or um, a trust made up, which would include all these forms and, uh, and some other forms that we're going to talk about today and on Thursday. But the Advanced Health Care Directive basically asks you for three names of people that you would like to speak on your behalf if you're not able to speak. Well, for me, it was really easy because I have three sons, so I just put my oldest, my middle, and my youngest. And um, I always tell people, once you fill this Advanced Health Care Directive out, it's really important to give a copy to the people who you've selected. So you want to discuss it with them first and then get their permission and see that they would agree to that. And then put their, it asks for their name, their address, their phone numbers, and you list those people. The next part of the Advanced Health Care Directive asks you what your wishes would be at the end of life. Basically, what it boils down to is, do you want to be resuscitated or not? It does give you some selections in between there. If you do say you don't want to, you do want to be resuscitated, then it also gives you other choices of how much resuscitation you want. And I'll get into further detail about that um, when we talk about it, another form. But the Advanced Health Care Directive is one of the most important forms that all of us, 18 years and older, need to have in place. Another document that serves a similar purpose, the same purpose actually, as the Advanced Health Care Directive is called Five Wishes. And I was hoping to have one here for you today, but I didn't have one at home. I'm going to try to have one to show you on Thursday. It's a blue booklet, and it's a, it has five questions in it. And it's basically the same information as an advanced health care uh, directive. It's just a little more user-friendly in that it tells you how to broach the subject. So this is a great form to sit down with your parents, your elderly loved ones, your spouse, your adult children, and talk about what your wishes are. It asks the same question, who do you want to be your agent? Um, what are your wishes at the end of life? And it gets into more of the, um, I want to say spiritual, but it's really not spiritual. It's more of the emotional things that are involved with this decision are in the five wishes. It's a great tool. You can order them online. Um, also, let me go back. The Advanced Health Care Directive does need to be notarized. The five wishes does not need to be notarized. It can be witnessed by two people, and it does... Uh, serve as a legal document once it's written that your signature is witnessed by two people. Again, whoever you're choosing for your agents, make sure they get a copy of the five wishes once you fill it out. The third form that I want to talk about is called POLST, P-O-L-S-T. And this form is normally on a hot pink card stock. It's one piece of paper, two-sided, and POLST stands for Physician's Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment. And it's basically a condensed version of the Advanced Health Care Directive and the Five Wishes. And this form was actually created by a group of physicians in Riverside County, and now it's used nationwide. I remember when this first came out, but it's a great tool because it's portable. So for instance, when I worked at an Alzheimer's assisted living, um, this and our, our, one of our residents would have to go to the hospital. We would have to call 911 and the ambulance came and took them. This pink form would go with them to the hospital. And um, it's also something that you can carry in your car in case you're in a car accident. And it's basically asks the same question. Of course, it asks for your name and date of birth and, um, 
your gender and social security number. It has um, four sections, A, B, C, and D. Section A basically asks, do you want to be resuscitated or do you not want to be resuscitated? So you choose one of those. And if you do choose that, yes, you do want to be resuscitated, Section B gives you some alternatives to that choice. So I'm going to go over those with you because these um, alternatives also are in the five wishes and the advanced health care directive. The first choice is full treatment. No matter what happens, you want every measure taken to be resuscitated. Selective treatment means that you want certain things done, but other things you don't. And you can actually write in and specify what you do and don't want. For example, on my advanced health care directive, I said that I only wanted to be resuscitated if there was a 100% chance of a full recovery. You know, if, if I was going to be resuscitated and I was going to be handicapped in some way, you know, I, I don't want to be resuscitated. That's my personal decision. It's a very individualized personal decision when you're filling these forms out because everybody feels differently about it. That's just how I feel. So selective treatment might mean that you do want to be resuscitated um, and you do want to be on a ventilator, um, but you don't want to be in intensive care or something like that. So there are some choices here that you can make under selective treatments. The third one is comfort focused treatment. And that would be that um, you just want the main focus to be on your com uh, that you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be taken to the hospital. You do want oxygen. Um, suction and manual treatment of airway obstruction to keep you comfortable, but not in, in a hero heroic way. So those are the three choices there. Section C is a place to add additional um, instructions. So that would be where you would list your specific instructions that maybe are not listed um, at in the section that I just talked about. And section D talks about artificial nutrition. That's also in the advanced health care directives and the five wishes. I oftentimes talk to family members about uh, their loved ones who have dementia. Um, if it came, you know, with the um, Alzheimer's and dementia, there sometimes comes a point where the person can't swallow. And then the family needs to make a decision. Do they want to put a feeding tube in the stomach and that's where they're fed through? Or do they want them to just uh, not have any measure like that? And so that's the question under Section D. And it gives you four choices. Provide, um, provide artificial nutrition through... Um, something that the tube that's already been in, installed or provide a new tube for um, tube feeding. And then there's a, a choice, no artificial means of nutrition desired. Um, and then the fourth one is um, discussed, but no decision made. So that would leave it kind of up in the air to your loved ones to have, make that decision. And, and, you know, tube feeding or manual, nutrition feeding is a very individualized decision too. If your loved one is 100 years old and they have dementia, what quality of life do they have? Do you want to extend that life and do everything you can to have them live as long as they can or do you not? And again, that's a very individualized um, choice. Then there's a place for you and your doctor to sign. The post form does not need to be witnessed or um, it does not need to be notarized. So that's the end of my 15 minutes already. But on Thursday, hopefully, I'm going to get through all the rest of the other documents. I'm not going to go into as much detail on those. I just felt like the healthcare directors were really important to spend a little bit more time on. So, in closing, I'd just like to say thank you for joining me today. If you are listening, could you please note if you're a family caregiver or a professional? 
and I hope that you'll join me for the second part of Critical Documents on Thursday at noon. Just so you know, Endling Caregiver Resource Center now has all 11 of our support groups in San Bernardino and Riverside County virtually. And I've been posting that on Facebook, but if you haven't seen it and you would like a copy, make a note here on Facebook, and I'll be happy to make sure you get a copy of that flyer. We also have all of our other services virtually as well, and I have a flyer with that information on it as well. For those of you who don't know in closing, I just would like to say that Inland Caregiver Resource Center is a not-for-profit organization serving family caregivers and seniors over 60. I hope you're all doing well, staying inside, wearing your mask, and doing everything we're supposed to do so we can get through this virus together and get back out and see everybody soon. So I hope to see you on Thursday. Have a great day. Bye.